Now this video is on push sticks or push blocks. You know, here's a, just a plain ordinary push stick. This is the kind I use most of the time. I have, it, have one hanging right alongside my bench all the time or my saw. And these are different widths. I mean, here's a pretty wide one, a narrow one. They use all these for different different things, and they also use them on the on the roller too. Now this is a push stick I use most of the time. And it's hanging on a, on a string here, or a little piece of rope. And I can grab it, push my stuff through, and then I just get through here, I let go of it. By the time I get ready for the next cut, I just grab a hold of it and swing it. It's always here, I never lose a thing. You know, it's not laying on a bench or something. Now the most important thing on a table saw, so what you need is you need a good blade and a sharp blade. Now the blades I use are seven and a quarter inch Diablo. They're seven and a quarter inch, 24 tooth framing blade. They're made for ripping. You will cross cut very well with them too. Now one thing about ripping and cross cut blades, you can cross cut with a rip blade very nicely, but you can't rip real good with just a regular cross cut blade because the teeth are too, too close together and a set isn't enough. But what I do is, that what you should do is, if you've got a 10 inch blade on your saw, please take the blade off, set it on the side, and put the 7 and a quarter inch on there. You'll do everything you need to do. You can cut an inch and a half thick with this, and that's very seldom you cut thicker than that. And to get a good picture of it, go to my, on YouTube to my Taming Your Table Saw, and you'll get the whole story on that. But just please take your 10 inch blade off, and, but the thing is, a 10 inch blade costs you about anywhere from forty to sixty dollars, eighty dollars, and then it costs you twenty five dollars to get it sharpened. This blade here at at Home Depot and Amazon costs you a little less than ten dollars, which means you can change the blade about three times for for what you have to just sharpen that blade for. And the blade is, is essentially have a real good sharp blade all the time because that prevents a lot of accidents. A dull blade, you start pushing real hard on there, that's where kickbacks start and accidents start coming. Now next thing I want to talk about is on the table saw insert. You should have a zero, we call it zero insert on there, which means you put an insert in there then you take a table saw and you crank it up and you cut a groove just exactly the width of the saw because that way nothing can get around on each side of it. Now there are some saws like job site saws you can't do that so I'm going to take you upstairs and show you a job site saw where it has a wide groove on there and you can't change it. And I'll show you how to cut narrow strips without very safely on that with that type of saw. Now when you're sawing anything, the first thing you do is you lay your piece that you want to cut up against the blade and make sure the blade is only about barely an eighth of an inch above the work. If you get it too high, it's very dangerous that way. Now you can see if I was cutting this strip to here, about a quarter inch thick. And if we got to the end here, this is going to go right down in there. And that means that thing can flop right back at you. So what you do is you go, you cut through like this. As far as you can go, tip your board over, and then cut the rest of it. And it'll prevent from going down in there. Because that's very dangerous. Now most of the time these older job site saws, they don't have you, don't, you can't replace this with anything else. You always have that groove there. The only way you can get rid of that is you literally take a piece of plywood, quarter inch plywood, and lay it right over the whole top and bring your saw up through that plywood. But then you have trouble with your rip fence and stuff like that. But the new ones, now I see a lot of them, you can put a different insert in here if you make it zero clearance. And that's very important. I like to put a date on a lot of these films for years, years down the road you wonder when it was made. So it's now July July 30th, 2015, 2016 and I had my 85th birthday in June of 2016 and I've been operating these table saws since I was about 15 years old. It gives me pretty close to 70 years operating a table saw and I still have all my fingers and I have no nicks or kinks or nothing, no cuts in them. So I think I can t speak with authority about table saws. Thank you. Now about 90% of table saw accidents 
are from kickbacks, not cut fingers, just plain kickbacks because it happens so often and it's happened so easy. And that's where this so small saw blade, I got the real thin blade, it almost, almost eliminates kickbacks. I haven't had a kickback on a saw for a long, long time. If it is a kickback, it's just so slightly you don't hardly notice it. But a 10 inch blade with those great big teeth spinning at you, you get kickbacks and you really got trouble. Now I want to talk to you about infield and outfield, outfield cables, in, in feed and outfeed, not field cables. And see what I've got here. I've got my workbench I'm working on all the time. And this is where it's in about two feet. I've got my table saw, and I've got an outfeed on the table saw there, so I can literally take an eight-foot piece. This is an eight-foot two by four. I'm not going to rip it, but I'm going to see how easy it is. It stays up by itself all the way through here. If you didn't have this bench here, you'd have to hold this 2x4 there into the saw, and it's going to be very difficult to pull it straight. So it's best to have an infield and an in, in feed and an outfeed cables on your saw. Now, you don't need one on an outfeed table quite as long as the one I've got there, but this worked out because I come to the end of the room there, so I just put it like that. But that's very important. On, on here, I can literally take a whole sheet of plywood and sheet of plywood on here and split it right on that saw like that with this bench on here all by myself. And it's pretty hard to do that with, with some, some type of an in-feed table. It's almost as important as an out-feed table. Now if you're not going to do too much long ripping, this is what we use on our mission field. We use this is a small this is a job site saw here. We just take this, that's about one three-quarter inch by maybe five or six, well about four inches wide and it clamps right to the rip fence and then we screw one underneath there, this one, this one here and now this one here is screwed under here and then it clamps, the, you put a clamp on here to the rip fence and then this one is this board here and that goes, that's level with the tabletop so that holds your wood up here you can put a pretty wide piece on it, so hold it up pretty decent and on the other side there to go out like that and that works pretty good and then you can just take this one clamp and take it off if you don't, don't want to use it. Now here's a picture of a push stick that I found in a magazine. Now first of all this push stick is way too narrow for that big board like that. The next thing you saw is way too high and the back here, there's too much of it onto the tables, onto the table of the table saw, and not enough on here. And what you need this is, if the board is an eighth inch or a quarter inch thick, you want this a quarter inch or less, because if you don't, this will raise up. It'll pivot here, pushing a big board like that too. That is going to twist and fly right up at you. So I'm going to take you downstairs and show you the ones I've got made there and they're a little bit different than this. This is always just a little tiny bit or just enough to catch the board and push it through. But this, like I say, again, that board is way too wide. I'll show you what to do with a wide board like that, you know, a short board like that. Now if you notice on a table saw, table saw there, right around the blade, i got that red line there. I just call it the don't cross the red line. Don't get your fingers any closer to the saw than that red line unless you got some protection between them like a push stick or something like that because that's where you can cut your finger off. Okay what I do on my push blocks here is I just take a piece of quarter inch plywood which is usually about 3 16 and I just screw it right to the bottom so I can replace it and that's what hooks onto your board and pushes it through. You don't need too much just a hook on there but you need some hook on on there when you're pushing it through like that and that's easily replaceable and now there's another one here this one I have you can see it here it's adjustable here so I can move it because I'm going to show you later on what this is for this is for cutting some real real small tiny strips so I'll show you that later on and then the, the wider one here of course is the same thing with just a quarter, quarter inch strip on there and I'll show you the idea of those hook holly ho ho real good. Okay, 
Okay, when you start cutting, the first thing you do is lay the wood up there and bring your saw down. Now, as I showed you upstairs on that picture I had there, this is the kind of thing they had on there. Well, there's just no control on this thing here. So if you take a one like this, you got all kinds of control because you can hold it down and you can literally hold it up to the fence that way. It cuts very easily and safely and you cut pretty small pieces that way. But you got a lot of control over it because you're bored. You're controlling all the way back here so you don't have to worry about it moving around on you. Very safe to know, but if you try anything else, one of these sticks like this, you're going to get about here, and that's going to start going away from there and hit, and that's what throws it up at you. But when you're doing this, always have that seven and a quarter inch blade. And don't try to do this with a ten inch blade, never, because the ten inch blade is so big, you know, it's just too dangerous. To cut. I just never use a ten inch blade because it just it's too much blade. You don't need that much just because this is going to do every, all the cutting you ever need. And I'm going to cut some strips here that I come here. I'm going to make them quarter inch wide, quarter inch wide, and about a, less, about less than an eighth inch thick. But first, I have to cut this down to a quarter inch wide. So I set this off here for a quarter inch. Notice my saw is only cuts an inch and a half, so I just flip it over and cut it again. So now I'm going to cut this in strips like this, a little less, less than an eighth of an inch here. So I bring my saw back down, set this over a, just a little bit, and that's when I take this one here, put it on here like this. I can take this on even make it thinner. I can make some eighth inch strips out of it. But again you got to have a zero degree, I mean uh, zero clearance insert in there so otherwise these sticks will start falling down there. If you didn't have that you could use a lot longer stick like this. But I'm just going to split this stick right in half now. Now if you notice, that's as close as my hand ever got to the saw blade. Very safe, there's really nothing could happen even if it snapped back on you. And it, it cut, what it does is cuts a little groove in here. That's why this is replaceable. Keep moving it up and cut a new groove in there. And that you can cut all kinds of sticks like this, real thin ones. I make a lot of models and that's what I use these for. You can make any kind of, any thickness I want. Now on YouTube I found a lot of places where they cut this, they put a little pointer here, attach it to this where the miter gauge goes, and then they bring their 
board up here and I'm going to show you to cut one piece. Now I cut the second piece, they got to bring their miter gauge up there again. And they cut another piece. But I don't understand the principle of it because you can do the same thing. I'm going to cut this, take this off of here. And I want to cut, cut pieces this thick. Or let's see, even thicker. Let's see, a quarter inch. That's the thinnest I've seen them make usually. cut in just a short while and they're all exactly the same and I cannot understand what the principle of it here is having moving this thing over all the time then you keep, every time you move it over you're getting closer and closer with to your blade with this and here your blade is back here all the time uh, I, I don't understand maybe somebody can explain it to me in a comment but I just don't understand what's the point of it Now here's quite a few people using these bush blocks here with just a sponge on there. But boy, I don't trust them at all. I would never use them. I bought this at a rummage sale for 25 cents. That's probably all it's worth to me. But you got here, you got to push down. So you're pushing against there. Besides that, and you, you don't have, it might be right here. You can just, wouldn't take much to twist there. And this can go halfway through and it twists on you. You have no control over the thing. I just don't like to use these at all. I recommend don't ever buy one because they don't, they don't do what you're supposed to do. They don't have the control on here. Now push sticks on a joiner. Now if you got a board that's above your fence here, you don't really have a problem because you can hang on to that real easy. You can hang on with both hands. I'm not going to turn the joiner on. I don't need to. And you can just feed that right through with no problem. But once you start getting below the below the fence most of your joining is just on the edges anyhow you blow the fence it's kind of hard to hold it here you know okay so what i do is i take i have just a punch i mean like a scratch all and i just take it here and i just point it right in there and that holds it real nice and straight tight and pull or that. You don't have to get your hand. When you get this far, then you can put your hand over here and you always move this real easy and just keep pushing it down and holding it tight. Any kind of block on there, you got to hook it on the end, but here you can just keep on pushing it wherever you want it. And then if you got smaller pieces, smaller pieces like this, then you use a block like this. You got the whole the whole thing is covered up here. Okay. Stand way back here and run it through. I'm hitting the outfeed table here, so that's why I have to lift it up a little bit. But anyhow, you got that right up there and clean right through there. And I do a lot of narrow cleaning, but most of the time I just use the, you got a real long one, more like this. So then just go ahead and get about here and you can do the same thing with with this you can push it in there and when you get this point here then you can run your hand across the top to get it on behind there and finish it up and that holds it real nice so you got a little dent in there you'll never know it by the time you got your project done now I've been showing you all kinds of cuts to make using the straight edge but that you can only get a parallel cut with the saw so but here you've got this case here you want to cut at an angle like this so I'm going to set that up and show you how to do that I got this prop <coughs> excuse me, propped up here now so you can see it because the light 
can't see that mark. So we just measure over from here. I got about three and a half inches. So I'm going to cut a strip four inches wide. And I'm going to lay this down and cut that strip for you. Okay, here's my mark. That's where I want to cut. So I take this and go on this side of it here. Now the straight edge is going to go along there, the rip fence rather. And I'm just going to lay this out right on the mark. Take some real tiny nails. Tack it down. Okay, the first time, first thing you do is check your saw height. Is this is about right. So a little bit lower. Let's turn the saw on. Now I shut it off halfway through the cut, but you can see here, this is against the red prints, and this is making your cut right here. You don't need any fancy jigs or anything. Cut almost any angle. You can buy all kinds of aluminum jigs and all the adjusting like that, but it's just so easy here. You just mark it off and it's just exact. If you want to make two or three of them, you can make it you can make any type of any angle you want on here. For many years I had worked out in the mission field doing mission work, cabinet work there, and I didn't have any jigs or anything like that. I had to make everything I could use. So I just got over a few tools and do it what I had. So I learned a lot of these things over like that. So I want to teach them to you. Thank you for watching. Now I'm going to show you how to use these push sticks and push blocks on a router table. Now I'm showing you I just put my handmade water t router table just somebody out a piece of plywood. I use, That's where I store it. I just set it on the floor like that up against it or I can hang it on a wall. Now I'm going to bring it up onto the bench and show you a closer view of it. Now that's a view of the underside of it. You see it's a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Or I think it's about a two inch hole drilled through it and a router put in there and, and screwed to the bottom from the bottom side. Just into the, the screws into the plywood. Now I'm going to tip it over and show the other side. Okay here's the top side of it. See when I'm not using it I just take the tools I use here and I screw them to the table and then I never lose them that way. So when I pull a table or a router table out it's all set to go. Now all I do is screw this to the bench and I'm going to do that now. Now I have two different fences for this fence here. I got just my little small router here, and I have this one here. If I want to put larger router heads on it, put it. So it's nothing but a piece of wood with some slots cut in here and holes drilled in there. It's very simple. It works real good. I just build a whole complete kitchen using it. Okay, I use this push block quite often on here. I use it two different ways. If I got a small, and just to cut this end off here, I'll turn this on and show you. On a wider board, it's just a plywood. I've got, I'm going to reset it here. If I got to put grooves like this, I have to move it over slightly, which I'm going to do now. To change this, all you got to do is push this thing back and forth. Okay, I've got to see This is going to be like for a face frame cabinet for face frame. It cuts a groove in there and that's where a pilot fits in. So I'm going to cut the groove now.
See, that loop had worked best just to use this one here. And that's where this plywood will fit right in like that. So that's how they're used on a router table. Now remember high end ear protection, but I want to make a point on this small seven and a quarter inch saw. It's very little noise on it. It's very, very quiet, so it helps on ears, but you still should wear earmuffs and eye, eye protectors. And also the saw that's created, but it is so little. You, I even had to, I even was able to d disconnect my dust collector on my table saw now with that small blade. It'd be very, very little sawdust. And that's what everybody remarks about it when I have them change the blade is that boy, there's hardly any sawdust here. So I just remember that. Thank you for watching.